Hello everyone, thank you for checking my video, and if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back to the channel. Patch 1.000.1 just released and it includes weapon balance, armor bug fix, they added environmental hazards, and many more. But before we get into the weapon balance, the designer, Alex K, would like to share some few words with you. This is the first round in a never-ending series of balance changes, and we believe it's important to be completely transparent about our approach to game balance especially when it comes to weapons and stratagems that you have a strong opinions about. Our goal is to give you a wide range of weapon choices where each gun has its own purpose and none is strictly better than the other. Sure, you will have your own favorite, but it should come from the personal preference, not from the universally agreed knowledge of which gun is the strongest. Generally, you balance each item according to its quirks, so if a weapon is very effective at what it does, it should come with significant disadvantages to balance its power. The AC-8 autocannon is a good example of well-balanced weapon. It packs a powerful punch and has a very good range, but requires you to carry an ammo backpack or have a friend assist you. The GEL-21 grenade launcher is the opposite example. It's a good general purpose weapon that gives you much flexibility. It obviously can't deal too much damage without becoming overpowered. But weapons that are powerful and versatile become a no-brainer choice during the weapon selection phase. It robs you of your own agency, as the stale meta builds force you to make unfair choice between fun weapon and an effective one. In short, powerful weapons can't be too versatile. Versatile weapons can't be too powerful. Having said all that, after analyzing player feedback and the data we've collected over the past month, we found the three biggest offenders of that principle which is the breaker, the railgun, and the shield generator backpack. All three of those were quite strong with too little downsides, overshadowing all other options on higher difficulty levels. So with this patch, they're getting significant downsides to balance their power. However, we strongly believe that the changes won't ruin this build, but rather help the affected items find their place among the other options and stay effective in capable hands. On a more personal note, I know that having your favorite toy nerf absolutely sucks. Investing countless hours in mastering a weapon is an incredible dedication from you, which is the main reason we're making this game in the first place. And then having that weapon weakened feels like a punishment for being too good at the game. But I implore you not to compare a changed item with its older version, but to evaluate the existing one as it is and see if it still has a place in your heart. We thank you for your dedication and commitment to spreading democracy in the most optimal way possible. Now it's up to us to make it as fun and entertaining as we can. Oh, we also buff a bunch of weapons as well. And an additional note from AHGS Fluffy on the Railgun's balancing changes. The Railgun was overperforming in its ease of use and convenience. We therefore made it so that safe mode of the Railgun is not able to penetrate heavier armor. but. The unsafe overcharge mode is still able to penetrate the heavier armor. In addition, the damage that the railgun does to massive body part is reduced, meaning you need to land headshots, other specific weak points shot for it to have maximum efficiency. So we have the breaker, decreased magazine capacity from 16 to 13, increased recoil from 30 to 55, railgun, decreased armor penetration, decreased damage against durable enemy parts, flamethrower. Increased damage per second by 50%. Laser cannon. Increased damage against durable enemy parts. Increased armor penetration. Improved ergonomics. Punisher. Increased total ammo capacity from 40 to 60. Increased stagger force. Increased damage from 40 per bullet to 45 per bullet. Breaker spray and prey. Increased armor penetration. Increased fire rate from 300 to 330. Increased number of pallets from 12 to 16 per shot. Decreased magazine size from 32 to 26. Energy shield backpack. Increased delay before recharging. 380mm and 120mm orbital barrage. Increased duration of the bombardment. Decreased spread. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where's the rest of it? That's it. That's all they did. Now, before you type in the comments saying, Oh, we were expecting buffs to other weapons, no nerfs at all. I want you to come back to Earth for for a while. Go back, go back to Earth. Stay away from Super Earth for a while. I know I was in the same boat as with you guys. Like I just wanted buff the other weapons and not no nerfs at all. But I get it. It's still a video game, and there has to be nerfs done if there's 
actually a weapon or weapons that are overperforming. If you're wondering why the balance weapon seems short, my guess is they were focused on the top performing weapons that are considered overpowered and the underperforming ones at the very bottom. Keep in mind, they track player feedback and they have their own way of tracking stats for specific weapons like the success rate and probably like failure rate for weapons, especially if they're used frequently or not. Sorry, but I kind of kind of want to go back to this line. The, I implore you not to compare the change item with its older version, but to evaluate the existing one as it is and see if it still has a place in your heart. It just reminds me of that uh, relationship quote. If you don't love me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. I just find it really funny. That's all. Okay. Let's go back to the weapons. Like, in all honesty, I'm more interested in trying out the Breaker Spray in Frey now after reading this. And even using the orbital barrages, the 380mm and the 120, the increased duration and the decreased spread sounds really good. And I really hope the decreased spread actually in a small area now and lessens the friendly fire. Uh, let me go down each weapon balance again, and I'll give my opinion on it. For the breaker, they decrease the magazine capacity from 16 to 13 and increase its recoil from 30 to 55. There is no nerf damage, but there is increased recoil and decreased magazine size. I think this will just affect hitting enemies from a farther distance. Railgun got straight up nerf. Flame tower is a nice change, nice damage up. Same with the laser cannon. I kinda wanna try it now. Punisher, I didn't expect this. I was just expecting an increase in capacity. I'm surprised the slugger didn't get an increase in capacity. And then again, I really like the slugger. Maybe that's why it didn't get nerfed because they already found it's performing good enough. So it doesn't need a balance for now. Breaker Spray and Pray, like I said earlier, that's the first one I'm gonna test. Energy Shield Backpack, I expected them to increase the delay of the shield before it becomes available again. And pretty much the 3080 and 120, it's more accurate and more deadly. Okay, we're not done yet. We still have more patch notes to look over through. So, Planetary Hazards active. Many plants now have additional environmental changes that will appear at random while you are deployed. From fire tornadoes to meteor showers and many more. Wait a minute. More environmental hazards? Oh, that's gonna be nice and funny. Can't wait to experience those. Balancing. Eradicate missions now require more kills and enemy spawns more often. The time to complete the mission was previously shorter than intended and should now usually take twice as long to complete. Well, we already discussed this. The primary, secondary support weapons, stratagems, we already discussed that. Fixes. Finally! Fixed armor rating values, not reducing damage as intended. Okay, that's the other thing I want to test. Fix certain bug holes including stalkerness that were unnecessarily hard to destroy. Fix anti-aliasing toggle not work on PS5. Balancing lighting across all planets to solve cases where the game was too dark. Improve flashlight efficacy. Increase visibility during sand, rain, weather, and Erata Prime. Okay, now I can finally see what's happening in Erata Prime. Nothing but sand and fog and wind. Oh, there's tornado, fire tornadoes, meteor showers. It's gonna kill us. Updated tutorial materials and lighting. Improved cases where some materials could look blurry if the lighting graphic setting was set to low. Fixed timing issues that could occur in the Extract E710 primary objective. Oh, that happened to me multiple times. Like the objective would be done even before we could refuel the ship. Okay. Change button interaction behavior for buttons in bunker POIs. Hell divers will now let go of the button after holding it for a few seconds. Fix some cases of large assets floating in the ground beneath them was blown up. I've seen those. Hell divers standing next to ICBMs during launch will now get properly toasty with a chance of not so spontaneous combustions. So don't stand near them, guys. If an ICBM launches, stay away. Fix untrollable snowballs after ragdolling. Fix being able to use grenades after drowning. Camera no longer lock on player's own corpses and blocking spectator mode. Oh, that happens to me a lot. Good to know it's fixed. Helldivers now take damage from fire, gas, etc. generated by other players. Oh, I've seen that happen. Armor no longer stretches when dismembered. Oh, that graphical, graphical glitch where everyone becomes elastic. Okay. Known issues. Picking up items from caches may cause characters to freeze in place for extended period of time. Picking up items from bunkers and caches quick succession may render one of the items unpickable. This has happened with super samples, the super uranium. If you pick them up too fast, one or two of them becomes unpickable. 
players cannot unfriend other players befriended via friend code. Players may be unable to select loadout or return to ship when joining a multiplayer game session via PS5 activity card. Occasional mission reward multiplier may not be applied. Mission objective HUD displays different numbers for client and host during some missions. Default armor is always shown while viewing the war bond regardless of armor that player has equipped. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. So it, so it changes whatever armor we're wearing. Okay, that's good to know. Text chat box display is obstructed by the cinematic letter boxing during extraction. Some text in the HUD UI is missing or not displaying correctly. Players may experience issues when many players attempt to log in or play at the same time. Hmm, I see it's still an issue. Login rate limiting, players may become disconnected during play, that happens to me multiple times. Various UI issues may appear when the game interacts with the servers. Some games may not be joinable by others for a short period of time. I like that they added more environmental hazards. As if the hole in the ground wasn't an issue enough. <laughs> the hole in the ground, the landmines, the terrain, the exploding plants. Arrowhead has no chill. Oh, and the armor fix is finally done. Do keep in mind, this is just one of many weapon balance changes. Don't just try what is meta. Try them all and see what fits your playstyle and not because someone said this is the best weapon, the best loadout, or the best whatever. Have fun! Like I said earlier, I am now interested in trying the spray and pray along with the orbital barrages. Before this update dropped, I had two build videos, which were the Mandalorian and Medic build. I just finished editing the Mandalorian build when this update happened. Expect those soon, and if you don't want to miss them, be sure to subscribe. We finally have the armor fix, now running heavy armor will have benefits rather than just being heavy. I would like to know what you guys think of this update. Let me know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching.